our primary goal of the study was connectivity um, for pedestrians and cyclists. And additionally, we also had a factor to look at as far as cut through traffic. A lot of folks cutting through to try to bypass the signal at 18th and 28th. So we also had, um, we also wanted to look at that with this study as well. The next slide is um, really just a chart that shows the general study process. We began by taking inventory of the area, um, looking at existing conditions as far as doing a field review, um, inventory of geometrics of the area, existing documents, historic mapping, um, other on ongoing projects, planning documents. And then after we reviewed all that information, we developed improvement options, associated probable costs, um, as well as some funding opportunities. And then eventually summarized that in a report. Uh, that report was issued uh, March of last year for this study. Our next slide, um, just a little more, I guess, further detail about those existing conditions. Um, we looked at pavement width, pavement condition, where the sidewalk is, what kind of condition the sidewalk is in, uh, intersection control, stop controlled signals. We did field observations where we actually observed traffic. I do want to note that we did not include a detailed quantitative analysis of traffic simply because the real goal of this study was to look at bikes and heads. Um, and the land use surrounding this area just was not um, such where we would, would look at, at quantitative traffic analysis. Um, and w during our field review, we didn't really find anything of note that would indicate that there were major uh, motor vehicle traffic issues, um, queue links or anything within the, the study area of Central Avenue. Um, there are um, sections of sidewalk that already exist along the corridor um, and would provide termini to connect to, to give connectivity to pedestrians. Um, and there are also uh, pedestrian generators. There's um, uh, Spring Park, there's a picture there. Um, there's places of worship, residential obviously. Um, so there's um, generators for those pedestrians and cyclists. The next slide, um, I'm gonna let Clark talk a little bit more in depth about that, but he's gonna talk about existing documents and those ad adjacent projects. Yeah, so, you know, this project's of course not done in a bubble, and we wanted to fit into a couple things. It was actually um, visioned within the Heart of Homewood plan, and I think they titled it the, the uh, Griffin Creek Greenway. Um, and so that was a little bit of the emphasis Andy mentioned the bike lanes along Central, as well as sidewalks most of the length there. Um, and, and those have been fairly popular, but they kind of start and end and kind of arbitrarily. So this is an opportunity to, ex to extend those. Um, of course, can't ignore the 18th Street project that, that's happening. And, and while the study was going on, it, it really hadn't even started yet. Um, but while that's kind of extending a main street, if you will, uh, it doesn't really handle bikes really well. It doesn't handle um, quick movement on bike or foot uh, through north-south. And so the Greenway is kind of a parallel route that really facilitate more of a, a, a kind of recreational or longer distance, more of a macro trail. And then that's where you see the Vulcan Trail, which is a project um, I think RPC was even involved with some, um, but the city of Birmingham is sponsoring to uh, bring a trail from uh, five points up the hill from downtown Birmingham to the Vulcan, and then it actually comes back down and stops at Valley Avenue. And so um, now you're starting to see, you know, you look at that and you look at Central Avenue, these are pieces of a broader trail system, and I think it's, it falls in line with the goals of uh, Freshwater Land Trust and the Red Rock Trail System. And so uh, we really wanted to see, you know, how best to, to kind of fit into those pieces uh, when we did this um, study. So our next slide um, really highlights a lot of the environmental features or things that we looked at. Um, so while we looked at environmental features as a, as a piece of the Apple program is to identify if a project, construction and um, full engineering of a project makes sense for federal funding. Um, and your you know, presence of environmental features or the extent of those environmental features can influence that decision. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we were looking at all those uh, things that you see listed there, um, looking for any environmental red flags that could potentially stop a project from happening. Um, and there's a lot of stuff listed there 
um, the the Central Avenue does go through uh, Rosedale, which is a historic district. Um, so that's important to note that. And then there's also, um, you know, this area is home to environmental justice community, um, low income minority community. Um, and so those are important things when you're looking at a project. But ultimately, the types of improvements that are that would come with this type of project would not adversely impact or disproportionately impact those environmental justice communities or um, the historic nature of of the area. So really just wanted to, there's no, nothing really of concern here, just wanted to let y'all know that that was part of our study procedure. So on our next slide, we took all that information, all the existing conditions, all these ongoing projects, and developed um, improvement options. So the goal of those improvements was to provide full connectivity for both um, cyclists and pedestrians. Um, and the, for the purposes of this study, we really divided um, Central Avenue into four sections. And so we'll talk more about those as we move further. But because um, each section within Central Avenue, although it's, it's somewhat of a small corridor, there's lots of different types of things going on all along Central Avenue. So it was important to look at those um, separately. So the first section, and we do have a map here to my left, the first section we looked at was Section A, and that's um, Central Avenue between 28th Avenue South um, to 27th Court South. So, um, Clark, I'll let you speak more about that. Yeah. Do y'all want me to turn this around, or can they not? It see? should be the, the next slide. Okay. Should show it, and hopefully that's. Um... <laughs> hey, Brian, can you go to the next slide, please? Oh, look at here. Okay, so perfect. Um, all right, th there's a good bit to unpack here. There's a lot loaded into this one graphic. And of course, uh, within the report, um, there's a larger format. You can zoom in and see all the parts of pieces. Um, I'm not going to move it to be zoomed in. Um, but I'm going to start from uh, the left side, which is really the south, and go to the right. Um, and so, like, like Jennifer was mentioning, the goal is to get a, uh, a, a, a nice path through this area, utilizing that existing right of way that was the old Central Avenue corridor. Uh, and really the, the termination point on the south side is the Central Avenue sidewalks and bike lanes like we mentioned. And so uh, to orient you, I think like Little Donkeys back here, um, this is the Iron Tribe Fitness up here. And so in order to connect to the existing sidewalk over in front of uh, Caliber, it stops there. It, there's some parking in front of Iron Tribe that's kind of in the way. but. It's actually public right away. So if you flip it to be angled parking that you enter and exit from the street, that gives you the needed space to be able to put that sidewalk from the intersection up against the building edge, which is that, that property line, and bring it around. The bike lanes would be extended, and they would culminate um, somewhere just after the curb in a mid-block crosswalk. Um, it would also have an adjacent uh, bike lane or bike crossing as well for that northbound bike lane. Uh, this would be it would be signalized, but it would have an active crossing signal, which it which would be called a rectangular rapid flashing beacon or an RRFB, and that's just like a lot of fancy jargon for uh, it doesn't flash until you push the button and then the lights flash, and it pr promotes a lot of uh, a compliance by vehicles. It's, it's highly recommended at mid-block type crossings. Um, so that would connect to really the beginning of the actual trail. Um, it's a 10-foot trail, would run along the creek uh, behind the existing buildings within that existing right-of-way. And uh, when we move on in a second, let's stay on this for now. When we move to the next slides in a few seconds, I'll show you some cross-sections. Um, it then runs up and crosses over behind the Dance Foundation um, to get to 27th Court South uh, right here. Uh, 
once crossing 28th, 27th Court South, we get into what we're calling Section B. And so between 27th Court South, which runs between the Dance Foundation and Jim and Jim's, to 27th Avenue, which is the road that, that it, uh, terminates at 18th in the post office. That short block there, where we have constrained right away on parts of it, the creek is in a uh, kind of walled uh, uh, type situation. And so in order to fit a path there, we, we needed to use the existing roadway. The other thing is that Jennifer mentioned was uh, addressing some of the cut through traffic. And when you see the cut through, it typically happens in the southbound direction. So it would be vehicles maybe that don't want to wait at the 18th and Central or 28th uh, light to turn right. And they may cut through the neighborhood and come out near uh, the lock shop. But um, you don't see it as much headed northbound because it requires two left turns. You'd have to turn left off the Central to get in the neighborhood and left out of the neighborhood back on the 18th. Um, and so in order to address that and, and provide us the width, we propose a one way of that one block of Central Avenue. Reduce the amount of width you need for vehicles, you create space for your trail, and you can go through there. Uh, the neighborhood connectivity is maintained, of course, by foot, but also by one block um, in, the op in, the, in the direction to the top of our drawing to the west. There, there's two-way connection with the vehicles. Um, we're just taking away that quickest and easiest route um, if, if somebody were to cut through, and then replacing that with the uh, pathway connection. Uh, two other quick things on here. Uh, 27th Terrace, which, which appears to be just kind of parking lot between these two buildings, there's opportunity there. It's an actual street, according to the city of Homewood right-of-way maps, you know, to make it more of a street, put in sidewalks and, and on-street parking. And then the last thing we looked at um, is just down here at the intersection of 18th and uh, the, the 27th court kind of makes this awkward fifth leg to that intersection. Um, there's a, there, there's, it's very awkward when people are coming out, especially turning left out of there to try and get back to 18th Street. And so uh, one option proposed there is to make it a right in only. So that first section be a one way in create some opportunities for parking, um, still provides access to places like NATO and Jim and Jim's, and then you still have your connectivity through the roadway back here um, and even into the Rosedale community uh, to get out. So you're not kind of going down and getting stuck. Um, does that kind of cover all the bits and pieces there? Yeah, oh yeah, if we can flip, oh, you got those. Um, can we go to the back of the slides and I'll show you the cross sections real quick? Oh, there we go. Or we can do the video one. Yeah, so just move forward. One more. All right, perfect. Um, so the first cross section up top is here um, at the trail, kind of across from uh, next to Huff Stutler uh, hardware there. Um, so the top one there, so if, if the green building along there would be Huffstutler, then you have the creek. Um, there's probably opportunity for stream restoration in this project. I think the way you end up implementing this um, really depends on the budget available and what all you can do. So this can be done on a very kind of low budget, um, very basic, but it could be fully done with stream restoration techniques, things like that. Um, so then next to the stream, of course, you have your 10-foot path, a small buffer, and then we want to maintain room for two-way vehicle flow, and then ha you would be able to have parking up against the buildings there. Um, 27th Terrace is down at the bottom. That's the street um, here that I was saying that um, kind of just looks like parking lot today and how everything would lay out for that. Uh, next slide. Uh, and then this is just kind of a blow up of that one way in there near D Nadeau. And then the next slide. Yeah, and then this is the section between uh, 27th Court and 27th Terrace where we would one-way the street, uh, have it one-way northbound, and then the path would be installed um, inside the existing curb lanes there. So um, our next slide. is 
section C. Um, and really for section C, we actually divided that even further into section C1 and C2. Um, and the, re the real reason for that is bit due to right away. Um, so section C1 um, is an option that would require, would require right away acquisition. So this is an area where sidewalk already exists on Central Avenue. Um, and if I can. Um, and then you have sidewalk along here that connects all the way um, to Spring Park. So C1 is an option um, that would continue that 10 foot wide trail essentially. So really can keep them with that um, uh, different, different experience, different trail that would um, get cyclists and pedestrians on this trail and cyclists would not, have, would not necessarily have to use the roadway. They could stay on, on the trail for this. Um, so that's option C1, but it would require um, right-of-way acquisition, um, but it would follow along the creek and connect to, um, connect to Spring Park. And then for section, so the other option within C1 is just to take the trail through section B, so through the one-way section, um, and then you're essentially dividing your cyclists, putting your cyclists back on the roadway, and pedestrians would use the existing sidewalk. Um, so with the with the other option, you keep that trail, you cross the trail um, across the roadway there and connect to Spring Park. Um, and you could even install some other improvements like uh, bike racks or things like that at the, at the park at that connection. Um, and then for C2 is essentially from Spring Park to 18th Street. Um, right now, and there's an, there's an inset there, but um, the next slide will show you uh, a, it's okay. A, de a more detailed view of of this but there is uh, now there is a dam that currently crosses the creek um, and there would need to be some improvements there to make it uh, ADA accessible to, for, to actually be accessible for pedestrians and cyclists um, but that would uh, essentially connect the connect to 18th Street so getting from one place the sidewalks that are on 18th Street and connect down to 28th um, but there are there would be improvements there for that so that's the um you can see that there where the dam is now currently it's a large uh, gabion so it's this wire type the best way to, i can describe it. it looks like really large chicken wire and within that are these are large rocks um this that they used to create the dam so the dam you'd have to have a surface on top of the dam either concrete or asphalt um, you'd also would need to have handrails just from a safety perspective because you are so much higher up from the from the creek below. So that gets us to really the end of the study area as far as connecting from between 28th and 18th. Um, but we also looked at the next section, like we've talked um, about being able to connect to the Vulcan Trail, which is will end at Valley Avenue. So we didn't, we weren't able to go a full detailed feasibility analysis as we were with sections A, B, and C, but we did want to give some options as different ways that you could connect, make that connection between the two. So you'll see three different um, alignments here. That's alternative A, alternative B, and alternative C. Um, but they would essentially, once this is in place, would connect five points all the way to um, to Central Park and Homewood using all the facilities that you have. Um, so on the next slide is really a typical section for Alternative A. Um, and it looks at a road diet essentially of 18th Street, um, which so beginning from uh, where 280 comes in now and continuing that up to Valley Avenue um, to provide for a multi-use path there. You'd still have a center turn lane one travel lane in each direction, and then you'd have the multi-use path there to connect to, um, to Valley Avenue. The um, next alternative, we don't have a typical section for that, so it's, it's really just the green line that you see there. Um, it follows the existing um, Central Avenue right away. There's no, there's not actually a road there, but um, for it picks up from Central Avenue right now, currently where that dead ends, um, goes along the creek, um, and eventually connects to 
Jefferson County Board of Education building. Um, so it's not really a direct path and there, there are definitely some challenges associated with that. There's some significant terrain challenges. Um, there's a lot of utilities in that area, some of which um, utilities are exposed. Um, um, like the, the pipes are exposed. Um, and you would uh, likely have to get some easement and right away acquisition near the, the water tank, um, you know, working with the Board of Education with their property crossing. Um, and really alternative C, which is um, the next slide, is the red line that you see there. Alternative C would utilize some of the existing roadway network within the neighborhood, um, but it's, it's a much less direct path from Valley Avenue to 18th Street, um, and you would, it still would require some coordination with Jefferson County Board of Education crossing their property. Um, but those are three options to look at um, as you move forward, looking at a potential trail extension. So like I said, um, the next slide shows opinions of probable cost. So we, these are planning levels of opinions of probable cost. Um, it, these costs do assume um, local funding and so not, so not utilizing federal funding. Um, and when we were planning, looking at this, you know, these are $20, $20. Um, and we looked at ALDOT bid tabs. Now I know I just said that we, w these are assumed like non-federal costs, local costs, but um, we feel like ALDOT, ALDOT bid tab information gives us a little more conservative number when we're looking at local funding. Um, so that's why we did use, use those. So you can see that there's definitely varies in costs. Um, section B is a smaller area and it can essentially can be done with some curbing, some striping changes um, to be able to have that, that section there. And then section C2, remember, is where you have the dam. So that would require hand, handrails um, and asphalt or concrete um, atop the dam. So the next slide, um, after we, we looked at the improvement options, we got some opinions of probable costs. We did want to identify some available funding. Um, so the next slide gives a little more detail about that. Um, the TAP projects, which I believe was 18th Street, the TAP project. So um, the TAP projects for this, I guess the most recent round of TAP projects are already have already been selected. Um, so would ha you'd have to wait for the next cycle to apply for that. Um, the, the TAP projects, the Transportation Alternative Program, and the Recreational Trail Program are both 80-20 match. The um, RTP application is actually uh, due March 3rd. Um, and so the, since this would be a uh, diverse use trail, the maximum amount of funding you could get through RTP would be 400000 but it would um, require a 20% match. That could be in cash or in kind for that, um, for that application. Um, the Rebuild Alabama Act is also, the annual grant program is also an option um, for this, uh, but the, those um, applications were due in November, so it would probably be at least another year before um, you could apply for that, for those. And then of course, local funding, 100% funding is always, always an option. And really, um, if you're just using local funds, that can speed up a project if you're not having to go through any kind of um, review processes or anything like that with uh, within a governing agency. The next slide, um, our next step after identifying the funding or really throughout the process is we met with stakeholders. Um, we met with two counselors um, and staff from, from the city, uh, presented existing conditions, also these improvement options. So we met with them as the study went on. Um, and then uh, the next slide, our final report was issued in March of last year. Um, if the city does choose to move forward with federal funds, the next step would be to talk with CAS um, about an MPO project or getting the project um, on, on their transportation improvement program. And then after that comes um, environmental studies, uh, construction, or prior to construction, if there's any right of way that would be needed, of course, you'd have to acquire that first. Um, but those are just briefly the next steps for, for the project. Um, and then that's that is our presentation. That's where we, where we wrapped up our study. So thanks for letting us be here tonight. I know it's, we wrapped up our study a little while ago, but we're glad to, to be here and to talk to you all about that. Um.
think it's an exciting project or possibility for the city. So do y'all have any questions for me or for Clark or for Kaz? Well, I would just like to say thank you for the work on it. I know it's been a, uh, a minute since it was completed, but with COVID and then, you know, turning into budget season and being what it was, it's hard to get it on the agenda. Um, I think our next steps are internally to discuss maybe next week, since we're running a little bit behind in this committee, um, discuss next week, just what we think about, obviously, whether we want to find it locally, whether we want to pursue, you know, federal money, um, and then, you know, but then budget it this coming fall, whenever we go through budgeting. So. But thank you all very much. Thank you all so much. Andy, can I ask one quick question? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, just when we were looking at those scenarios for the connection from the end of Central on to Vulcan or Valley, I guess, in this case. So there was like scenario A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. So on B, it shows it more or less along Griffin. Mm -hmm. And I was, I think we had heard something recently about the whether what we could actually do within the blue way essentially that is the birmingham waterworks uh right of way what, what would it take to get permission to do that or what would we be potentially potentially be doing could it be done in that in that area uh, yeah i mean I, I think there's potential certainly need to coordinate with birmingham waterworks uh, honestly i think option b is probably the most expensive due to the terrain um, back here in that Greenway area, there's a pretty significant ravine. So you're, you're now you're talking of a pedestrian rated bridge uh, as well. Um, so you would require some permitting to, yeah. to since there's it's floodplain. So um, you'd likely be filling in that floodplain too for the trail. Maybe in some places you could limit that since it is a recreational trail. Um, but you definitely have some permitting involved with that. Okay, thanks. I mean, just because looking at it, A and B appear to be the most direct for sure. And right. I just wanted to see, you know, what those, th the difference between those two were. Thanks. Well, I think, go ahead, Cass. And it just, this is 30 seconds and it might save you all some, some effort, but um, there's a rule that a city cannot apply for tap. <laughs> Come up to the mic, please. Come up to the mic. Oh. Um, and I can sign it. Mike Kesarowski, Regional Planning Commission. Um, the Transportation Alternative Program, the TAP program, uh, you are not allowed to apply for another uh, grant until the one you have is under construction. So I see a lot of heads bobbing, but I just wanted to make sure. So the 18th Street one would need to be authorized for to go to bid before you apply. Now the next round of applications we're planning is in May. So if I, I think, I think your project might be bid for like May of 20, you could probably apply for May of 2022 mm -hmm. for one of these segments. That's, that's where I'd be planning if I were in your shoes. So I just needed to say that. Wait, Thanks, Andy. Kaz, yes. we're on a real quick question. Mm -hmm. Does it have to just be authorized and out to bid or does it have to, does the construction have to actually be completed? Great question. No, it just has to be authorized for expenditure. So it didn't okay. even have to go to bid yet. But when the Federal Highway Administration says, okay, you're ready to move to, into construction, then you can apply. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Certainly. Good, Good question. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate right. that. The only comment that I was going to make was obviously this wasn't part of the study area. Uh, but I think we also need to kind of, once the Birmingham Trail gets built, see what it does, ha what effects that that has on the traffic coming down the hill. Do we still need five lanes through there or what, or four lanes? Um, well, thank you all for coming. We appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you take it. We'll, we'll, we'll pass out a digital copy. Okay, so you don't know that? Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Yeah, I've got an email copy of it. I meant to send it out this morning, and I slipped my mind. I will send it out tonight. Um, all right, so we will carry over 020121 uh, under old business 160115, update on past, present, and future sidewalk projects. Greg Cobb. Um, did we have any? Greg, looks like you left the room. Uh, Jennifer, are you able to hear us? Okay. Yes, thank you. And I really need an update on Lancaster. Uh, specifically, I have a, um, 
family that is close to the edge of 31 that is waiting on us uh, to remove a tree before they can move forward with some of their um, driveway needs. And um, if I can get an update, I, I really need one. Thank you. Yes. Um, I talked to Clark about Salter today and uh, about him getting, to, getting a set of plans for that. Mm -hmm. so we going to have to go out and bid and we'll need some drawings and, and a contract and all. I, up until 4 o'clock today, I had Lancaster scheduled for this week, but we got a wrench thrown in the gears on our other project. So um, I've got uh, two contractors, Price and Beam, Montgomery Street and the connector between uh, Peerless and Mecca. There's, a, there's an alley, a paper alley there in between a church and a house that we can make a connector through there. That one's gonna be a little more expensive per foot because it's got a lot of handwork in it. There's only four feet between the retaining wall and the fence. So you can't get a piece of machinery in there to level it all up. See, okay, that's Lancaster Salter be in Montgomery Street and that connector here. Yeah. Those are the ones we're working on. Can, can I uh, Durham and Lakeshore. Okay. And can we talk about Lancaster quickly? Um, so you said it was supposed to be this week. When do you think it might be? And can I get an answer on the Datnoff tree uh, when you might have an ETA on when that's coming down? Thank I have you. no idea when a tree's coming down. We turned that in weeks ago. Um, and uh, <clears throat> no, not, I've not forgotten about the piece down at, uh, across from Brookwood. That'll, that'll be done too. If that same contractor is one that's working on our fire station right now. He was low bidder on it, and uh, they changed plans at 4 o'clock this afternoon. So whenever he can change the steel out in that project and pour it, it might be another week. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Greg, can I ask one quick question about Salter? Um, just for those of you who don't know, the area where the park is going to be has been, uh, Sanford has done the demolition on the two houses, so there are no Ooh. houses on there anymore. Um, if Clark, and Clark, you said Clark's going to work up some um, some plans so that we can get it right. out to bid. Do we know when we might put that out for bid? He didn't say. I talked to him this afternoon. Okay. Okay. Hey, there, there away. <clears throat> Any idea on when that might be? Uh, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, so yeah. if you just say, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. That project's 3,100 feet long. It's going to be yeah. expensive. Yeah. All right. So three to six months to get the plans to get it out to bid. Got it. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. All right. So let's carry over 1601.15 for an update next uh, committee, committee meeting as well. Uh, 30.06.19, request to consider ordinance governing small cell antennas. Uh, we'll carry over this item as well. We need to circle back for some housekeeping as I forgot to approve the minutes from the last meeting. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to dispense the reading and approval of the minutes in the Planning and Development Committee of December 7th. So moved. Councilor Andrus and uh, Councilor Nelms. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. nay. All right, so the minutes stand approved 5-0. Uh, P&D is adjourned.